Hello and welcome to the Dominican Republic, the heart of the Caribbean. Tim Hall with you here on Tourist TV, where you'll always see the very best of what the Dominican Republic has to offer. TTV is your Dominican Republic Discovery Channel. In addition to visiting some of the most important and interesting sites around the country, we are going to take you behind the scenes to see the places and meet some of the people that have made this the fastest growing tourist destination in all of the Caribbean. If you have a window seat as you fly into the Dominican Republic, you quickly realize that this country is a lot more than just a spit of sand in the Caribbean Sea. This is the second largest island in the Caribbean. The only one bigger is Cuba. The modern sprawling capital, Santo Domingo on the south coast, is actually the oldest city of the New World. It was founded by Bartholomew Columbus, a few years after Brother Christopher adopted this island in 1492. The historical colonial zone here will attract the world in 1992, during the fifth centennial celebration of the discovery of the Americas. Over a million people will visit the Dominican Republic this year, a number that has more than doubled over the last decade. Many visitors stay at the beach resorts located in the south, southeast, and northern coasts of the island. Here you find beaches that go non-stop for 20 and 30 miles at a time. These things tropical are enhanced by the Dominicans themselves. Most visitors agree that Dominicans are the friendliest hosts they have ever met when traveling. This is still very much a developing country, but the breakneck pace at which the DR is developing reflects the resilience and resourcefulness of the six and a half million Dominicans living here. Their adeptness and ingenuity, despite limited resources, is manifest in the many handicrafts offered to visitors. And in recent years, these skills have been put to work by scores of multinational corporations that have set up manufacturing facilities here. Beyond the stands selling straw hats and ceramics are factories producing everything from high-tech components for Silicon Valley to fur garments for 7th Avenue. Indeed, the Dominican Republic offers much more than what meets the eye. Most visitors discover only the typically tropical attractions, but beyond the beaches is a land crisscrossed by a number of mountain ranges. The variety of climates that result give growth not only to coconut palms, but also to vast forests of pine trees. And while in the valleys you find rice paddies and sugarcane plantations, in the highlands you find snow peas and even vineyards. Now with the geography lesson behind us, we should perhaps deal with other more important issues of vacationing, celebrating for example. This is another area where Dominicans display remarkable resilience and resourcefulness. The most graphic display of this is the Santo Domingo Carnival, a street festival of floats and costumes that jams the wide oceanfront Malacan for a week every February. Whatever the time of the year though, if you can't find a reason to celebrate, your Dominican hosts are sure to come to your rescue. And it doesn't really matter whether you came for the beauty, the sand and the surf, the peaceful countryside or the big city. If you're like the majority of visitors, it's the Dominican people you're most likely to remark upon when you get back home from the Dominican Republic. Desde que se levanta, la ciudad también tiene su canto. Ah. 
Así mismo es Barceló. Calidad todo el tiempo. Santo Domingo's Colonial Zone is located in the southeastern part of the city, cradled by the Caribbean Sea and the mouth of the Ozama River. It is here that the New World began, and it is here that the New World will celebrate its 500th birthday in 1992. Founded in 1504 by Christopher Columbus's brother Bartholomew, Santo Domingo was the gateway to the further explorations of the Western Hemisphere. The Colonial Zone is ideal for walking tours. In the space of five or six city blocks, you'll find Christopher Columbus's family residence, the Alcazar, the first hospital, fortress, university, and cathedral built by Europeans in the New World. You can visit the cathedral where Columbus is buried, as well as a number of other museums and buildings where guided tours are offered and where you'll discover endless New World artifacts and lore. Along the cobblestone streets here, you'll also find restaurants, cafes, and galleries for relaxing and browsing. The Dominican Republic is the second largest country in the Caribbean. Situated as Puerto Rico's neighbor to the west, it's an hour and three quarters by plane from Miami, three and a half hours from New York, and four hours from Toronto or Montreal. Most people visiting the Dominican Republic have come for the beaches, and on the North Coast, beaches is what they get. Two thirds of the North Coast is Virgin Beach. With all this just beyond your hotel lobby, what better way to spend the day than to go out exploring with the rooftop down and the sun on your face. signs are few and far between, but on the paved two-lane highway that runs parallel to the shore along most of the north coast, it's hard to get lost. If you do, you'll find the folks in the countryside more than willing to lend a hand. Even if you don't speak Spanish, with a poor favor and a lot of gesturing, you'll be on your way in no time. Through country villages and past roadside stands selling everything from straw hats to sugarcane juice, traveling through an ever-changing countryside, on the north coast, it's easy to feel like you're on a National Geographic expedition. Meanwhile, your hotel swim-up bar is just a few miles away. All along the highway, dirt tracks run down to the shore. Most of the coastline is public access. Trespassing is not a concern. Beaches on the open sea, though, can have strong currents, so be careful where you go into the water. The Dominican Republic offers much more than endless beaches and tropical beauty. This is a relatively small country, about the size of New England. Yet, it's a land as diverse as America itself, an island of arid deserts and lush rainforests, fertile farmland and acres of Everglades. Here, you find the Caribbean's highest mountain, where night air turns to frost, 
and also the Caribbean's lowest point, a saltwater lake 40 feet below sea level. Some call this the modern-day Garden of Eden for the richness of its flora and for its diverse and bountiful harvests. At the supermarket, you find many excellent local products, such as breads and meats and cheeses produced in Sisua and fresh strawberries and grapes grown in the interior. All along the way, you'll find dozens of reasons to stop, make friends, practice your Spanish, take pictures, or turn a roadside stop into an impromptu party. So what do you think is worth seeing on the North Coast? What are the best places to go to? Just when people get out and just get out on the highway and go exploring. You don't go to the, the main beaches. You just rent a little uh, car and go off the like yeah, off yeah. the beaten track. Rent a boogie. Yes. Get off the beaten track, go along the inner roads and see the beaches. There's three, four beautiful little beaches every mile or so. You'll just see one after the other and take your choice. So you went to Rio San Juan? Uh-huh. Yeah, Playa yeah. Grande, and uh, we've been out to Sosua and the beach and Cabarete, and of course in Puerto Plata. There's, yeah, the, <laughs> there's a lagoon out there, right? Yes, we and took we'll, a boat trip yeah. out through the, uh, it's, it's, all, it's like an Everglade, you go through, and then you go out into a beautiful uh, aqua blue like you see here. Yeah, when we were on the beach at Playa Grande, uh, some little young local Dominican kids were cracking the conch and cooking it up the meat for us on the beach. It was really wild. I'd never had that before. And you like it? Yes, so far, yes. What do you like best about the country? Mm, the people, the rum, and the temperature. It's always nice. No snow. Everything's here for you. Yeah, no snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. This is Tim Hall with Tourist Television. La calidad toma su tiempo. Por arte, calidad y tradición, Bermúdez, el mejor ron dominicano. The Dominican Republic is a democratic nation led by a president elected every four years. This country has a population of 6.2 million people. While Spanish is the official language, English is widely spoken in the business sector and in tourist regions. In the capital city of Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic's Spanish heritage is reflected in the Spanish architecture down in the old city. But on the north coast, tourists in Puerto Plata discover a city full of the gingerbread curlicues of Victorian architecture. Founded in 1502 and destroyed by fire a century ago, Puerto Plata was left with only one authentic Spanish structure, Fort San Felipe. The Victorian architecture here heralds from the early 1900s when Puerto Plata was booming as the country's most important port city. The city fell on hard times and slow decay in the 1930s due to its political resistance during the 30-year reign of dictator Rafael Trujillo. Trujillo was assassinated in 61, democracy was established a few years later, and from then on it was only a matter of time before 
Puerto Plata's coastline, two-thirds of it virgin beaches, would begin to attract tourists. By 1980, after the World Bank assisted with an airport and with the Playa Dorada Hotel complex, Puerto Plata was ready to begin a new life as a tourist destination. The Playa Dorada complex is a country club of hotels and beach resorts on the outskirts of town. On one side is an 18-hole Robert Trent Jones golf course. On the other, the 10-mile long Playa Dorada Beach. There are 10 hotels here and over 2,000 rooms, all built since 1980. The region is attracting more than 200,000 tourists every year. Puerto Plata is a city that combines the rich cultural experience of visiting a developing country along with all the comforts and amenities of modern hotels. A guided tour is good preparation for later going out and discovering on foot. Puerto Plata's sightseeing attractions include a cable car ride that climbs nearly 3,000 feet to the summit park of Mount Isabel de Torres. Dominating the port is Fort San Felipe. Tour guides here recount the fort's history of numerous pirate attacks. The city's central square features an authentic Victorian Glorietta, rebuilt from the turn of the century. This is the ideal starting point for shopping and sightseeing on foot. Nearby is the Amber Museum, and one of the world's finest collections of amber, a semi-precious gem that hardened from tree sap 30 million years ago, trapping prehistoric insects and flowers. Shops in Puerto Plata provide excellent value on locally made goods. You'll find jewelry made with the island's many fascinating stones, along with ceramics, handicrafts, and cigars handmade by displaced Havana craftsmen. At sundown, action picks up near Long Beach, on the edge of town. Here you'll find wiener schnitzel, homemade Italian pastas, French fondues, and many Creole specialties, all for six or seven dollars per plate. Puerto Plata's first modern discotheque, Vivaldi, is also here, and a short walk gets you to Puerto Plata Beach Resort, where casino action carries on into the wee hours. Direct flights to Puerto Plata originate in Miami, New York, and Newark, and seasonal charters fly in from many Canadian and European cities. All this sudden interest from around the world has taken Puerto Plata residents somewhat by surprise. However, few complain, as their city's new status as one of the Caribbean's most important tourist destinations has brought back the bustle they enjoyed at the turn of the century. Apollo Tours offers a wide variety of fascinating trips and excursions around the Amber Coast in comfortable air-conditioned buses. If you'd like to do a little sightseeing, see your Apollo Tours rep in finer Puerto Plata hotels or call Apollo Tours at 586-2751. vacation in the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean's fastest growing destination, a trip complete with all the elegance and Victorian charm of Puerto Plata Beach Resort and Casino. Every air-conditioned room is a suite in this five-star hotel where the active find endless daytime diversion and the passive an oversized pool and beach for just lazing around. For the pleasure of your palate, Puerto Plata's finest seafood and gourmet restaurants and every night, live shows, dancing, and casino action till the wee hours. Puerto Plata Beach Resort and Casino, an unconventional hotel masterpiece from AMSA Hotels. These days, almost all the pottery we buy is stamped from molds and mass-produced. 
Pots that are produced by hand at a potter's wheel are usually found only in art galleries and specialized boutiques and can run into hundreds of dollars. But potter Bruce Kornbluth provides a happy medium in his Alpha Dome production studio in Santo Domingo. Capable of producing thousands of pieces each week, prices drop considerably. Meanwhile, every piece is turned by hand at a potter's wheel and decorated in a way that makes each one unique. I started out as a studio potter in the United States, a one-man operation, basically going to art fairs and doing wholesale and retail. And that world, the, the pots are quite expensive. They're, um, you might be making functional and non-functional things, but you're paying almost art prices for the pieces. And I always had this, this sort of fantasy about the idea of being able to get a lot of people working together so that you can make affordable art pottery. And what we have here is we have 15 to 20 skilled potters working in unison with designer, myself, and we have a large capacity for firing the pots and kilns and also support people doing the glazing and decorating. So, so what we're basically trying to do is have the flexibility of a studio pottery wherein you can make an unlimited range of different pieces at any given moment, but also have a factory situation in that we can make large numbers of special design pieces. In 1981, Bruce Kornbluth packed his potter's wheel and headed for the Caribbean to supervise a pottery development project in the Dominican Republic countryside. Two years later, he founded Alpha Dome. I thought that making pottery in the Dominican Republic was a good idea. Labor costs were low. There was an emerging tourist industry here. We're fairly close to the United States, and it's, it's very easy to ship. There's a very good phone system here. Communications with the United States and with Western Europe are excellent. And there's, there's available clay, and most of the materials are available here. And the workforce is good. There, people don't have preconceived images, which is, is a useful thing. Um, we don't have a lot of people who have an idea of what we were doing, so it was, a, it was a clean slate. It was simply a matter of training people and exposing people to what I knew. We use matte finishes and glaze finishes together, which is fairly unusual, and that, that kind of gives it a uniqueness. A lot of the things I do come from practical reasons. The reason we, we splash colors onto pots originally started as a way, to, a way to deal with glaze without twice firing the pots, doing a bisque firing, it's called. Um, that's how it started. Firing lasts for 15 hours. Burners are shut down when the temperature reaches 2,350 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,350 degrees Celsius. The kilns are then left to cool for 15 hours. Most of what we make here is decorative, but I want the stuff to hold up too. It's, it's well made and quality control is a very important thing also, but it has to look good and it has to last. While running a brisk production and wholesale business, Bruce's beginnings as a studio potter, running his own one-man shop, have not been forgotten. His passion for the art shows when special one-of-a-kind orders come his way. For example, when the interior decorators of one of Santo Domingo's most luxurious hotels needed a unique idea for their grand lobby in public areas, they found at Alpha Dome the eye and the hands of an artist along with a production facility that could respond in short notice to their specific need. If a hotel came in here and wanted a special order of lamps, five, six hundred lamps, let's say three or four designs, we'd probably spend four or five days working up the designs and production time wouldn't even be a week, I don't think. If it's a large piece for someone, an interior decorator, someone who's doing a new house, a hotel wants a special piece for a lobby, we'll make one. In fact, I enjoy designing one piece. We'll also make, we've made our biggest order to date, I think, is we once made 20,000 ashtrays for a hotel. I have one big wholesale in the United States that right now we're working on doing a special line for him so that it doesn't look like the other things we make, and that's, that's, that's a real enjoyable process for me. This unique blend of creative and productive flexibility has prompted a new and growing export business for Alpha Dome, which is now shipping ceramics by the container load to wholesalers and retailers in North America, Europe, 
and even Japan. The sales to Japan is something that really excites me. It's, um, it's something that... The tradition that I was trained in in pottery basically came from the Orient. Here I am now, from the United States down to the Dominican Republic, making pottery and um, shipping it back to Japan where the whole thing started. It's sort of like um, carrying coals to Newcastle. We try to do a lot with shape because a potter's wheel, although being a really amazing tool, is a fairly limited tool. You can only make round things. Uh, so I try to play a lot with surface decoration, with, with ridges, with, with borders, with things like that to expand on the surface possibilities of a, of a round pot. decorative, it's attractive, it's modern, and it, it's, it, it has a personal statement. I think they stand, stand on their own as nice looking pots, and they certainly attract people's interest. They're nice focal points. Alpha Dome pottery is available at better shops and boutiques throughout the Dominican Republic. For information concerning wholesale and export, contact Alpha Dome directly by telephone or fax. Let's go now and take a look at Sasua, a seaside village 12 miles east of Puerto Plata that makes for an interesting alternative to St. Thomas or St. Martin. The village of Sasua is built around a half mile beach protected from the open sea by coral cliffs. At one end of the beach lies the lively Latin neighborhood of Los Charamicos, an area where many of the locals live who make their living catering to tourists. At the other end lies El Bate, a cosmopolitan center of shops and boutiques and sidewalk bistros. This is a Latin American village gone international where English, German, French, and Italian take equal precedence to the local Spanish. In the middle of all of this lies Sasua Beach, where international and local color blend together. In addition to soaking up the sun here, there's a myriad opportunities for water sports, sampling local foods, shopping for handicrafts, or just plain people watching. In the 1920s, Sisua was a banana plantation operated by the United Fruit Company of Boston. A miniature railroad coursed through the hills and down to this dock where boats were loaded before setting sail. In 1940, Sisua became the home of 600 Jewish refugees who escaped the Nazi scourge. Living in barracks, they divided up the land and the chores and built up a thriving meat and dairy industry. Sasua was not a tourist town when the nearby Puerto Plata airport opened in 1980, but word got out about Sasua's beach, mostly through flight attendants and airline crew, and Sasua began to attract the kind of world travelers who seek out-of-the-way places. What happened was, many came for a week or two and stayed to open the dozens of specialty restaurants and shops that now line the streets. In 1982, Susua had only a few dozen hotel rooms and a couple of restaurants. Within five years, more than 1,000 rooms had been built and eateries numbered over 50. Private investors have begun multi-million dollar projects here, giving Susua equal importance to such government-sponsored projects as Playa Dorada. While growth has been dramatic, Sasua retains the charm of a small resort village. Sundown is time for cocktails, relaxing over dinner, dancing and club hopping. In many of Sasua clubs and discos, last call is decided not by the house, but by the customers. Underlying the basic tourist attractions here is Sasua's unique blend of things Creole and cosmopolitan 
a mixture that works to transcend social strata and attract Bohemians from all walks of life. In Sisua, however, it doesn't appear to matter whether your outfit is Bill Blass or Kmart. Labels take second place to good times, and a good time is had by all. The Seahorse Ranch is an exclusive 250-acre oceanfront community located between Sisua and Cabarete. Unquestionably the North Coast's premier address, you'll find here luxurious villas and estates equipped with every comfort from cable TV to clay courts, surrounded with the natural luxuries of vast green areas, centenary hardwoods, gardens and several private beaches. If your lifestyle and portfolio call for Caribbean living at its finest, you will find it at Seahorse Ranch, the resort community with a pedigree. Llevo la vainita, llevo remolacha, llevo berenjena, llevo molotrones. Carbone, carbonero. Otro cama vieja, tufa vieja, abanico viejo, boje prim viejo, colchón viejo, licuadora vieja, menos mujeres viejas. Olor a caña, canto de gloria, somos los que cantan. Porque quiero me voy. Porque quiero. El pregón. Un canto por la vida desde el comienzo de la mañana. ¡El volador! Somos un pueblo que canta. Así mismo es Barceló. ¡Patele, patele, 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 patele! Calidad todo el tiempo. ¡Palito de coco! As the sport of board sailing gathers hurricane proportions worldwide, it's the steady 10 to 25 knot breezes blowing June to September that's putting wind in the sails of beginners and experts, shopkeepers and real estate promoters in the town of Cabaretti on the north coast of the Dominican Republic. Couldn't have been better. I think it's the best slalom in the Caribbean. As conditions go, I think it's the best slalom we have had since I first I live in Hawaii. In Hawaii, we were considered to have the best sailing in the world. Um, and here, to me, the last couple days, I've had more fun racing than I've had anywhere. It's the last vestige, the last holdout, where you can come without being uh, over-commercialized. You have a fighting chance with a dollar. <laughs> we really like the people. And we like the business opportunities. And we like the temperature. Next year, uh, Cabarete will be a very, very important contest in our world tour. In June, Cabaretti played host to 10,000 spectators who came to see 57 of the world's best board sailors compete for prize money and cumulative points in the third Cabaretti World Cup slalom event. The race is sanctioned by the Professional Board Sailors Association and sponsored by Heineken and a host of co-sponsors. After 30 races around the world each year, the PBA World Tour ends with a Grand Slam competition in Maui in October. Highlighted by 18 to 25 knot winds and 15 foot surf, the Cabaretti Slalom event saw Andres Bringdahl of Sweden win the men's category and the women's competition taken by West Germany's Judah Mueller. Cabaretti, 14 miles east of the Puerto Plata airport on the north coast of the Dominican Republic, was the last of four races in the Caribbean after Curaçao, Aruba, and Puerto Rico. According to those on the circuit, Cabaretti is about the best. Conditions are the best because we have waves, like normally in Curaçao, Aruba, it's flat water, and Puerto Rico, it's course racing and flat water too. So this is really the best slalom because everybody likes to go through the waves because it's exciting. You can fall really easily and the positions can change. So it's really, a very good race. Here yesterday we were measuring peak winds of 24, 25 knots. At one point yesterday it was blowing very hard, very good. We have waves from one to five meters on the reef. That's pretty big. 
And here you've got a tremendous venue. You've got restaurants, you've got bars. You can come in and have a cold drink and just step off your board. It's, there's no place really that's, that's close to this as far as just having the nice you know, situation here. For someone to come down here on a holiday for a sailing vacation, it's, uh, it's incredible. You, it's not like anywhere else you'd go. Everywhere else is higher pace. You're gonna be paying a lot of money for a hotel going to and from the beach and you know maybe having hassle with rental here you can just show up you can rent your equipment and walk straight out on the beach and boom you go out sailing come in it's lunchtime and you can just come right up on the beach and pick one of I don't know how many spots there are here it's uh, it's, it's quite a quite a location the people are really friendly everything is pretty cheap like the food like if you compare it to the other Caribbean islands it's just a great atmosphere Every day at 10 o'clock, morning man Bob Gordon finishes spinning the big band discs at WFTR Miami. By 11, he and wife Ginny are at their cabana on Key Biscayne, heading for the water with their sailboards. Recently, they discovered Cabaretti. Whoever said you have to be under 30 to windsurf? Well, my wife started windsurfing first. And uh, to me, it's probably the greatest form of sport for any age group. I don't care if you're 25 or in your mid-50s, such as I am. Uh, when you're out there on the board, everyone is equal. You don't have to be an Olympic athlete to do it. You can be just the average guy who enjoys being out of doors on the water, the average woman who enjoys being on the water. And you can learn to windsurf in a little bit of time. And if you're here in Cabarete, you can learn to windsurf in no time because you have plenty of wind. And I'm on the air from 6 to 10 in the morning. By 11 o'clock, I'm on Key Biscayne, and I'm on the water, and I'm gone. She started it and then taught me, and now I'm high on wind and hooked, you know? Cabaretti is four hours by plane from New York, less than two hours from Miami, and the ride from Puerto Plata Airport takes less than half an hour. All services, supermarkets, hotels, windsurf schools, restaurants, and night spots are within walking distance of the beach. You can also visit the nearby towns of Sisua and Puerto Plata for dining and nightlife and casinos. During the day, you can go horseback riding, cave exploring, play tennis, or go golfing, all within a 10-minute drive. You have excellent food. Prices are very reasonable. All of the accommodations we have found, even visiting the other hotels, we're at the windsurfing uh, uh, apartments and uh, hotel. Uh, all of them that we have visited are perfect. Perfect clean, for comfortable, breezy. And when we found out there wasn't going to be air conditioning here, we had a few, you know, we're spoiled, let's face it, we're from Miami. Someone said, well, there's not much air conditioning in Cabaret. <laughs> and when we got here, we were really surprised because of the tropical breezes. There's always a cool breeze blowing. It's really nice. And the food is excellent. Vegetables are fresh and ripe. Uh, wish we had this kind of produce uh, in the States. All right. And the water, you get what, bottled water, so there's, no, there's been no problem whatsoever. And for people who have never windsurfed, come to Cabaret. In 1984, Cabaret was little more than a quiet weekend retreat for people from the cities of the interior, until a few Canadians discovered what they considered were the best wind conditions on the Atlantic seaboard. After years on the windsurfing circuit, Robert Aitzier chose to make Cabaretti his home. Now, when he's not negotiating the winds on Cabaretti Bay, he negotiates the shoreline that's attracting investors from all over the world. Spring of 1985, a uh, French Canadian opened a school here with 10 boards. Now, 1990, we have eight schools and over 300 boards for, for rent in the bay. All top equipment, all this year's top equipment. This is a big, big success. If you take apart from that, there was one restaurant on the beach. Now we have over, I would say, 15 restaurants within the, the town of, of Cabarete. There was not one single hotel. Now, if you take three kilometers before Cabarete, Three kilometers after Cabarete, in that six kilometer span, we have close to a thousand rooms. Just for an example, we are here in a project that is uh, for Cabarete, and I think any, anywhere in the tropics, a first class accommodation. Two bedroom condos, fully furnished, totally well done with a swimming pool, and this goes for 
$600 a week. We have Cross the Street, a place where you can have a room and breakfast for $13 a day. Those who got in first saw land values triple in three years, he says, although that kind of gain has slowed down. However, with the Dominican Republic only two hours from mainland USA, and with the Caribbean becoming increasingly fashionable among Europeans, healthy capital gains are bound to continue. In the Virgin, the Amer American Virgin Island, uh, beachfront, but I mean oceanfront, no beach, rock, coral reef, uh, is at uh, $250 per square meter. Here, Sandy Beach, we're at 120 It will probably go slowly. Here we say that appreciation in land takes minimum 25% per year. The Dominican Republic welcomes foreign investment, says ATA, and setting up shop involves little more than registering a corporation and soliciting permits. As Cabaretti grows, new opportunities sprout for all kinds of tourism-related businesses. For an example, uh, two years ago, uh, there was somebody, I was talking with somebody, and he said, what can I do? I said, well, you know, if you want to settle in Cabarete, you can buy a garbage truck and just start picking up garbage. And he did that. And uh, he started with a little van, uh, with a little open truck. Then the need was there. He bought a bigger truck. Then the need was still there because hotel picking up, picking up. He went to Canada, he bought a regular garbage truck and he operated the, the, his business uh, out of that. After living in Haiti, Colombia and Costa Rica, Bob and Jana Amlingmeyer converted a Cabaretti beach house to an art gallery, one of several that Jana operates, while Bob runs a private school for English-speaking children. We've been overseas for 20 years, but we've chosen the Dominican Republic to settle in because we find the people very friendly. We find it easy to work in the community. Uh, it's a very good place to raise the children and have a family, which family is very important to us. So that was one of the reasons we chose here. And we're looking for a more calm, peaceful life uh, to live. As the, as the development goes, well, I'm not going to give you all the, all the tricks. You have to come here, check it out, and there's a lot of possibilities. For more information about investing in a business or in real estate, call West Indies Real Estate at 809-571-2820. Evaluación hay de para refriar un matimo doloroso en el cuerpo doloroso en el vientre, los riñones, el estómago, sale con la mierda, a veces dañe bastante el hombre, la mujer y los niños. Caché hay un hombre para los riñones, se intestina, el hígado caliente, vaina, la sangre, fibra y paño, el pedo, el bebé, el negro, el tapamar, para los amigos, el billete vaginal, le gusta el empeño y el sema. Soundest investment opportunity in the Caribbean. Modern factories, new industrial parks, the most advanced communications facilities anywhere in the region. The Dominican Republic offers international businesses a new and exciting opportunity. A country steeped in history, discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1492, the Dominican Republic became known as the New World. A lush land of natural forests and beaches, high mountains and picturesque plains, and most of all, a resourceful and creative people. This was the land Christopher Columbus was said to have loved best. A rich history, striking architecture, the first university in the Americas dating back to 1538. The Dominican Republic's past provides a backdrop for a vibrant nation. Now, almost 500 years after Columbus's voyage, the Dominican Republic offers much to a fast-changing world. Opportunity, stability, a strong and expanding economy, 
a hard-working and available workforce ready to meet today's business needs. The Dominican Republic's ambassador to the U.S. and one of the country's most successful businessmen, Eduardo Leon. They say that when God made the world and he hit there with a stake, he said, let be land, he had landed in the Dominican Republic with so many rivers and mountains and, and uh, beaches. So, uh, no doubt, the Dominican Republic offers so many things. You have to go over there and see it for yourself. <laughs> the Dominican Republic is located just west of Puerto Rico and is the second largest country in the Caribbean, about 18,000 square miles, or twice the size of the state of Massachusetts. The population is just over six and a half million, second largest in the area. The Dominican Republic is easily accessible by air and by sea. There are several modern international ports ready to ship cargo to the U.S. in less than four days, and four international airports at Santo Domingo, La Romana, Santiago, and Puerto Plata. New York is just three hours from the Dominican Republic, Miami less than two hours, and Puerto Rico only 45 minutes by plane. What makes the Dominican Republic such an attractive nation for foreign investment? Five main reasons. One, state-of-the-art technology and communications. Two, the quality, quantity, and cost of the labor force. Three, the stability of the country and government. Four, easy access from anywhere in the world for busy business executives. And five, the laws promoting investment and the expansion of the free zones. Mr. Ken Wilson, Vice President of Westinghouse Electric Corporation. The Dominican Republic today offers uh, companies like Westinghouse a great incentive to, to do business there. Uh, the local government incentives coupled with U.S. incentives under uh, tax codes and tariff schedules make it very attractive for companies like Westinghouse to set up shop. They also have probably uh, the most competitive uh, wages in the industrial free world and a workforce that is uh, outstanding and has a, a great work effort and ethic. There are currently over 175 international companies that have set up operations in the Dominican Republic. Small, medium, and large firms are finding this nation to be a boon for their business. The technology and advanced communications available are state-of-the-art. Ready access, instant communications, mobile telephones, direct dial anywhere in the world, first-class computer operations, and new fiber optics transmission put the Dominican Republic far out in front of its neighboring countries. My responsibilities are with several banking institutions and we are online with our principal correspondents in the U.S. At the same time, I have online my operations in Panama, and this is done uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, within the country also, we operate with 16 different branches. Codatel, part of GTE Corporation, has been in the Dominican Republic for over 55 years. They have recently made new innovative investments in computer equipment and a sophisticated computer mapping project. Using trained Dominican workers, Codatel is transferring engineering drawings and plans of their complex telephone routing system to computer. This cost-effective approach illustrates the productivity and current potential of high technology in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic's greatest resource is its people, anxious to work, available for training, and loyal on the job. The labor force of some two million people includes a large supply of unskilled and semi-skilled labor, as well as trained technical and managerial personnel. Special training programs have been established at local colleges, universities, and trade schools, with many of the companies investing in the country. Employee turnover is very low, and workers are diligent and anxious to advance. The average work week is 44 hours, and the minimum wage with fringe benefits is about 60 cents an hour, highly competitive with similar countries. Whatever the nature of the work, mining, agriculture, manufacturing, high technology, service, the Dominican Republic workforce can handle the job. It's important here, I think that the people are very committed to modernization. The Dominican people are striving 
to make their lives better. That you see that there are a lot of schools, a lot of uh, technical schools, a lot of vocational school, language schools, and you see everybody going to school at night. And that means that people are striving to have a better life. Another critical factor to potential investors is the stability of the government and the economy. The Dominican Republic is a working representative democracy with national powers divided among independent executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The Dominican Republic has exhibited a strong and stable democratic tradition. The strength of the Dominican Republic's democratic government is also exhibited in its economic infrastructure. The leadership of the Dominican Republic, government and business, is committed to expanding foreign investment and providing real incentives to I interested firms. Say that the Dominican Republic should be very well studied and considered. Not only us as Dominicans do we have our interest here, we know how to welcome foreign ventures and we know how to work together. We have shown it in the past and I truly believe that's the road to follow in the future. These incentives can provide foreign investors with substantial savings. Industries engaged in manufacturing products for export are entitled to 100% exemption from income tax and total exemption from import duties on machinery, plant equipment, raw materials, and semi-finished products. In addition, all corporate capitalization, formation, and document taxes are waived. These exemptions are applicable from 8 to 20 years depending upon the geographical location of the enterprise. The Caribbean Basin Initiative, instituted by the United States, is expanding private sector opportunities in the Dominican Republic. All U.S. duties are eliminated until 1996 if, one, the product is exported directly from the country, and two, if the product is made or substantially made in the country. The most encouraging development for potential investors has been the rapid expansion of new modern free zones. In addition to exemptions from all duties, taxes, and foreign exchange controls, free zones provide central locations, industrial parks, to set up production plants. Recreational facilities, cafeterias, first aid stations, and transportation links have been established for many of the free zones. A wide range of goods from electronics to apparel, from computers to household products, from pharmaceuticals to furs, are made, packaged, and shipped from a self-contained free zone. Last week, there were uh, over 11 sailings, 10 or 11 sailings to the United States alone from Dominican ports. So you could basically pick a ship almost any day of the week. It's not every country in the Caribbean basin that has uh, that intensity and frequency of, of service. The growth of the free zones has been miraculous. The number of free zone employees has risen from 18,000 in 1982 to 85,000 in 1988 and is expected to exceed 100,000 by 1990. Total exports from free zones have reached $489 million, up from $150 million in 1982. There are now 14 free zones in operation, 9 under construction, and 7 new zones planned for development factory space is rapidly expanding to meet worldwide demand. The popularity of the free zones can best be understood by walking through one of Westinghouse's four plants, which employ 500 people, as they make circuit boards, cables, and wiring harnesses. Or by walking through a Haynes factory, as they sew and assemble 6,500 dozen garments a week. They'll be expanding the operation sixfold within two years. Or at Information Magnetics, where they make over 28,000 computer heads each week with an all-Dominican workforce. In addition to manufacturing, there is a strong agribusiness industry that has diversified from such traditional exports as sugarcane and tobacco into new areas such as Chinese vegetables, cut flowers, winter vegetables, and fresh fruit. Land is plentiful. Several microclimates allow for a variety of products. And companies like Dole have recently invested in the Dominican Republic. Dole is leasing thousands of acres to develop the nation's major pineapple venture and will be the largest exporter of fresh pineapples and related products. The Dominican Republic offers a quality of life second to none in the Caribbean. Bustling modern cities like Santo Domingo with low crime rates, new first-class hotels, an executive club for traveling business people, there are six local television stations, 
nine national newspapers and daily delivery of papers like the New York Times and Wall Street Journal. Culture is alive in the 1600-seat opera house and concert hall, and the Dominican Republic is home to many famous baseball players, such as George Bell and Pedro Guerrero, and renowned designer Oscar de la Renta. Well, I think that physically the island is a beautiful island. I think that have wonderful, nice, trusting people, serious people, and, uh, and, and I think that the number of opportunities is immense. More and more business people are finding the Dominican Republic not just a fine place to visit, but a fine place to live as well. The resort area, Casa de Campo, with its own international airport, was rated the best golf resort in the world by Golf Magazine. There are sports for everyone, polo matches, tennis, fishing, water sports, or just plain relaxing in comfortable, affordable surroundings. There has been a remarkable 40% increase in the construction of hotel rooms, with major resorts built at Puerto Plata, Playa Dorada, Playa Grande, and many other areas around the island. Much of this development in tourism and other sectors of the economy is being financed by Dominican capital. Foreign investors are playing an important role, working with Dominicans to realize continued growth. The Dominican Republic offers investors in tourism the same exemptions from taxes and duties as manufacturers, up to a period of 10 years. The government of the Dominican Republic stands ready through the Investment Promotion Council to provide ongoing assistance to international firms, to provide the information necessary to make a sound investment decision. Mr. Ken Wilson. From the very beginning, the IPC was involved in our, uh, in our program, in our planning, and the most important thing that they gave to us was the confidence that we uh, needed to know that the government was really behind our program. The Investment Promotion Not Council's to, president, to Antonio Cáceres Troncoso. But it's very important, the attitude of the Dominican people. The attitude, the positive attitude of the Dominican people towards foreign investors. Not only the people, of, but also the government and the private sector. To get your questions answered, to set up your business quickly and efficiently, let the Investment Promotion Council be your guide and let the Dominican Republic become the location of choice for your investment. Discover the new world of investment opportunity. Join a nation that is on the move, ready and able to provide that competitive edge for your business. impressed with the Dominican Republic and uh, I think the people are superb and I, I would come back.